this is the day. This is the season, a new season for you. And the word of God instructs us in Psalm 118 to be glad and rejoice. You might say, well, Pastor Stephen, I'm feeling kind of sad. Well, praise God, you're in the right place. We're with the right person, the person of the living God. So let's ask for his help right now. Precious Heavenly Father, be with my friend. Flood their place with your presence. Holy Spirit, come. Come, Holy Spirit. Jesus has you on assignment to unfold the treasure map of God's will and word for our lives. We need your help. We never want to take for granted access to your presence. We believe we receive your help right now in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Why, oh, why? Part one, this is a new series, why, oh, why? A lot of people got big questions and they usually start with why. It has been said that until you ask the right questions, you never get the right answers. Friends of ours have a daughter, she's about 14, and one day she asked her mom, she said, mom, why do bad things happen to good people? She, along with a few other million people, have asked the same question. It's a simple answer that needs to be answered, not by fate or religion, or by doctrine that we invent to arrive at a compromise with our worst fears. No, that's just agreeing to be a slave to fear forever. There is an answer, a God answer. God has the answer, and in fact, God is the answer. Why, oh, why? We all have those times in life that are marked by great pressure, maybe a heartbreaking loss, somebody going to heaven somebody passing, hard choices, a painful ending, failures, even new beginnings, a new start that just seems to be overwhelming. There is a universal question asked by many people, especially in the face of hardship, loss, or one of the most challenging places, feeling isolated, feeling alone, cut off, in a crowd, but alone. The question is, why? Why, oh, why? It's universal. You've heard it. You've probably spoken it in one way or another. Sometimes it even sounds like this. Why, God, why? Or maybe, why this? Why that? I don't understand. Why? Remember, until you ask the right questions, you never get the right answers. But there is a way to ask. Yes, there's even an art to the ask. Right questions right way, and the right source. If you're asking Siri or AI the why to life questions, you're desperately going to need a lot of help and a lot of saving, my friend. You've heard the famous story of the man who was lamenting his state of poverty and his lack. He was so broke that he couldn't even own a pair of shoes. Why? Oh, why? He just kept moaning. Why? Lord, why? But then he met a veteran who'd been deployed to Afghanistan lost both of his legs in military action. The man who was once poor looked down at his healthy feet, his healthy legs. He asked, why? I've got two healthy feet. Why, oh why, what a blessing. Isn't it interesting how a new perspective of thankfulness can reveal the sudden potential for the future, for the why? There is an art to asking the right questions in life. Is it possible that you're at a pivotal place in life? The circumstances are very challenging and you found yourself at least thinking in one form or another, why, why, oh why? It's not wrong to ask, but the skill to your question has much to do with your perspective, your knowledge of the big picture. We are in a world that is subject to the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. It's where anything in this closed system that we call natural life is subject to decline, disorder, decay. Even the natural life of your body is predictably moving toward a condition of disorder. Some call it old age. If you experience weakness, sickness, disease, you might say, why, why? Why, oh, why? Why me? Bob Hope, the late great comedian who lived to be 100 years old, once said this. He said, I don't feel old. I don't feel anything until noon. Then it's time for my nap. <laughs> Even dreams and ambition can be subject 
to the same law of entropy, decay, in this closed system. Marriages that start out with such passion, attraction, and unlimited potential, but now two different people wonder what happened and find themselves asking, why? Why, oh why, why us? Why me? If you want to talk about the law of disintegration, listen to this. Mike Tyson, you know, the famous heavyweight boxer, he once said this. He said, you can't stay married in a situation where you are afraid to go to sleep in case your wife might cut your throat. Now that, now that, my friend, is the law of decay. Yes, even the sun in our universe is subject to this law of entropy, gradual deterioration. Did you know that scientists say the sun is already 50% of the way through its life cycle? (laughs) <laughs> but cheer up. There's great hope. There's real hope. All of this is meant to draw our attention to the reality that, yes, there is a law of decay in this closed system called natural life. But on the other hand, you're here alive on planet Earth at a time when the sun is converting millions of tons of matter into life-giving energy every second so that you can fulfill your God-given destiny. So why, oh why, why? You may be asking, you should be asking, oh, because God's got big plans for you. Yes, you. That's why. That's why. There are two sides to the genuine coin of truth. Let's look at Romans 5 verses 12 through 15. Therefore, as sin came into the world through one man and death as the result of sin, so death spread to all men because all men sinned. To be sure, sin was in the world before ever the law was given. Yet death held sway from Adam to Moses, even over those who did not themselves transgress as Adam did. Adam was a type of the one who was to come. In reverse, the former destructive, the latter saving. But God's free gift is not at all to be compared to the trespass. His grace is out of all proportion to the fall of man. For if many died through one man's falling away, much more profusely did God's grace and the free gift that comes through the undeserved favor of the one man, Jesus Christ, abound and overflow to and for the benefit of many, the benefit of you. There is a closed system that is completely under the law of sin and death. This natural life, as we just read in Romans 5, verse 12, sin came into the world through one man and death as the result of sin, so death spread. That's what the Bible says. That's the second law of thermodynamics, the law of entropy. Everything moves toward disorder, chaos, rust, degeneration, breaking, disease, divorce. And then we find ourselves saying in one form or another, why, why, oh, why, oh, why? But in, in God's kingdom, which is the system of life, the life system that can only be accessed by being born again of a spiritual order, we get access to all of God's original plans for excellence before sin brought degeneration into the world. So the other side of the coin of reality becomes a positive, happy, why, oh why? Why would God so love me? Why does God continually bless me? I don't deserve his grace, so why me? Why, oh why? Oh, because you belong in and to God. Remember verse 15? God's free gift is not at all to be compared to the trespass. His grace is out of all proportion. My friend, you can start a whole new reality of life by going from a closed, deteriorating, decaying system of sin and death to the kingdom of God's dear son, the kingdom of light. I was on a flight out of Nashville years ago and across the aisle from me sat Chris Christopherson the singer, songwriter, the actor. I introduced myself and let him know that we had a mutual acquaintance who had once told me the story of how he had written the song, Why Me? Why Me, Lord? One of his biggest hits that he wrote backstage at the old Grand Ole Opry. The interesting twist in that song is that the why me question is directed toward God and basically asks, what did I ever do to deserve your goodness, your mercy, even one of these pleasures that I've known. Why me, Lord? Why do I get to have this? And then Chris lands the hook of the song on Lord help me, Jesus. I've wasted it so. 
help me, Jesus, my soul's in your hands. It's basically a prayer asking God to help him take advantage of the ridiculous grace and favor and the forgiveness that he's been gifted. So let's take back a term hijacked by this culture so that we can get out to get in. We got to get out of the deteriorating system to get in to the kingdom of God system. Yes, get out of the death curse we read about in Romans 5 and get into the free gift of life blessing. Tyler Perry once said this, and through one of his characters in his movies, he said, you got to get in where you can fit in. God has a specific plan fit for you, not in the system of death, but in life for life. If you ask why from the closed death cycle, it's always going to be a bad negative. Why? Oh, why? You need out so that you can get in to God's free gift of life where why sounds more like, yay, yay me. Why me so blessed? Why would God want me and his family? Why God in my living room, right here in my living room? Why God? Maybe you thought that the only hope of surviving today was to buy into the woke agenda. No, God's calling us to wake up out of a sleep of death and step into his life. And more good news, no matter how lost your soul is, Jesus is the resurrection specialist and he's calling you into life now. Revival is simply being revived back to life. Psalm 23 verse 3 says this, the good shepherd restores my soul, restores my soul. Praise God. He doesn't replace you, but restores you. Jesus restores you for God's family and for your destiny. So here we go. This is important. The Bible talks about the body of Christ, which is the governing body, which Jesus calls his ecclesia. That's a Greek word. And that's where we get the English word church. Notice it's not a building. No, no, nothing wrong with buildings, but this is Christ's governing body of ambassadors, which he works his power and authority on earth through. Do you remember when Jesus gave Peter, the apostle, his true identity? Matthew 16, verse 18, Jesus said this to him. He says, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades shall not overpower it. That word Jesus uses that we translate in English as church is ecclesia. It's a Greek term meaning called out assembly of citizens, governing body, exercising complete control. It's not a religious group or a building, but a governing body of representatives for the kingdom of God. What? Are you kidding me? What a complete mess we've made of this word church. And that's mostly why many non-religious people seem to hate the word church, because we've abused it. Ephesians 1, verses 22 to 23. And he has put all things under his feet and has appointed him the universal and supreme head of the church, ecclesia, church, which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all things in all. Yes, we have in great part dismantled the meaning of a good word, a word Jesus promoted for power and his fullness to inhabit. We've generally substituted his body, his ecclesia, church, for a traditional form of religious property management. At the same time, we've evicted God's presence from our homes, our everyday lives. In a strange way, we put God in some building across town, what we call a church, you know, a nice one with lots of seats and maybe some stained glass. We hire custodians to take care of his building while we live our lives separately. Sure, we visit him on the odd weekend, maybe Christmas, Easter, but this is crazy. Here's a question for you. Why? Why, oh, why? You see, this is intrinsically connected to our life questions, why? We've exported the very presence of life out of our life. We've put God in a home other than our home, and we've sanitized our everyday life of the 24-hour-a-day blessing of his presence and his wisdom. Then we find ourselves stuck in a vortex of what's left over, which is nothing but trouble, lack, confusion, destructive plots of the enemy. 
We find ourselves dealing with the sad questions of little boys and girls going, why? What's going on? Why? No, not in a positive way, like I just got healed, why? Or I just got promoted and filled with wisdom from above, why? Or comforted from all sorrows and filled with joy, why? Why would God choose to bless me, wise? <laughs> Those are the fun whys that we get to answer people with. A good friend of mine got promoted not too long ago. He's an honorable man, loves Jesus, and always is embracing God's presence in his home, with his family. He opens up his doors to others to enjoy Jesus right there in his living room. He works for a large firm and is faithful, hardworking, and he's humble. His company recognizes hard work, gave him a big bonus and a promotion. His response was, well, why? Well, he let Jesus live with him and bless him. He enjoys God's presence in his home, his living room. Church isn't a building to him. It's the governing body of Christ, ecclesia. My friend is an envoy for Jesus. In Jesus' words, he's part of the governing body called the church in which even the gates of hell are powerless against. Sounds good, doesn't it? Sounds like something you and I would like, right? My friend, that can be you too. Know this, God wants to make your place home. God wants to make your life, your place, his home. So let's talk about the possibilities today. The answer to your why, oh why questions. Pastor Stephen, how in the world can I go from a state of hopeless, broke, and discouraged to a place where I'm actually asking, why would God love me so much and so bless me and favor me? Yes, why? In the most positive, excited, I can't believe I'm so love way. Well, here are three fundamental truths that have Bible-backed power to transform your life and answer your why. I've seen this work for CEOs, teenagers, professionals in high-stress careers, families, retired people, you name it. Yes, I've seen God's Word bring such clarity that it produces stunning, stunning outcomes. God's fundamentals will move you into real-life results. It's time for you to know the answer to your big whys. God wants you to know. Like a battery-operated car, you need the source of your charge so that you can have some get up and go for life. You need answers to your why. So here are three fundamentals for life. These are essential. You must ask the right questions to get the right answers, to understand how God answers. I'm gonna drill down deeper on these in the next segment of this series. So make sure that you take time to study part one and then part two in tandem. But here's an overview. Three fundamental answers to the right questions God's truth is expert at guiding you into. Number one, why God's word? This is the genesis of life, creation, truth. This is truth, truth, reality. The word is God, is truth. Number two, why God's family? See, family is where you get your true identity. Jesus' name, it's the family name. His name becomes your name to use. We pray in the family name, the name of Jesus. And number three, why Christ's body? Well, because this determines your ultimate purpose. This is why there, there even is Living Room Church. Regardless of your affiliation or your Sunday go meeting habit, God has some fresh revelation for you in this area. Why is it so important to be in Christ's ecclesia, his body, his governing body? Because this triggers your purpose. It's eternal reality coming together with your true identity, God with you and in you, not living in a building made with hands. Yes, you're in the truth, in his family, and you have purpose. The outcome of these first two fundamentals push into the purpose of why, into the purpose of why God lives with you and in you. You belong. Yeah, you got it. Now you begin to understand why God wants to be with you even in your living room, because you belong. If Jesus can't be Lord of your living room, you have to ask yourself, if the fundamentals are truly even active in your life, is your why more from a sad, hopeless, or fatalistic place 
because that's not the place Jesus died to have you in. No, he died so that you could have life and have it more abundantly. But also he paid this amazing price so that he can live with you, to live with you and in you. Look at Acts 17, verse 24. The God who created the world and everything in it, since he is the Lord of heaven and earth, does not dwell in temples made with hands. Oh, but I thought that big church cross town was God's house. You see, only religion would dare defer God's presence to a building made with hands, especially after 1 Corinthians 3 verse 9 says, you, you are God's building. That's right, you. Let's take a look at this funnel here. Look at this funnel, it's basically three parts. The input, then there's the process activation part, and then there's the output. There's the input, the activation part, and then there's the output. It's interesting that in the marketing world, a funnel is sometimes used to demonstrate their steps. With the wide top part being labeled as awareness, the narrowing middle section is labeled desire, and finally, the focus, most narrow part of the funnel is called action. This is where the action truly takes place. In many ways, it's similar to these kingdom of God life fundamentals. The wide part is awareness of God's son, Jesus, the truth. You need to be aware of who you are in him. That awareness is the ultimate truth. Next is the identity part, the desire to be the desire to be activated, to live, moves you deeper into the funnel of true identity. You become truly who you are in the activation part. And then finally, it moves to the authentic action side. This is your purpose, real measurable outcome where Jesus is not only your savior, but he is Lord directing the actions of your life, your fruitfulness, your outcome, Jesus living with you, triggering all of his rich benefits and purpose in you. Jesus saves and transforms and guides. You're in, but you've got to move through. John 14 verse 23 says this, Jesus answered, if a person really loves me, he will keep my word, obey my teaching, and my father will love him, and we will come to him and make our home our abode, special dwelling place with him. Oh, praise God, my friend. Isn't that amazing? You belong and God wants to live with you. Truth, identity, purpose. Truth, identity, purpose. You ask, why? Why is God so in love with you? Why does he have this amazing destiny for you, even though you've been so active in a closed system of sin and death? Even though you've been locked in a, I did it my way system, like the psalmist said, give thanks to the Lord for he is good. His mercy and loving kindness endure forever. How long? Forever. Oh, can you hear it in the tone of God's voice? You belong. And the answer to why doesn't mean problems or troubles don't come. Look at John 16, verse 33. Jesus said, I've told you these things so that in me, in the funnel of life, in me, you may have perfect peace and confidence. In the world, you're gonna have tribulation and trials and distress and frustration, but be of good cheer, take courage, be confident, certain, undaunted, for I have overcome the world. I have deprived it of power to harm you and have conquered it for you. The psalmist said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. It's not that it never rains, but God is a spiritual umbrella maker. You belong. Yes, you belong. If you're not in, you're out. If you're not under, you're not covered. It can be cold outside, but nice and warm in my house. If you're not in, you're out in the cold. If it's just a matter of a few feet, you're still out in the cold. You belong in, not out. Imagine this. If you're out in the cold, you're freezing. You're uncomfortable. You're not happy, but you're sad. You're shivering 
asking, why? Oh, why? If you don't know you belong, you're asking the wrong questions. But if you're in, if you're inside, you could be sitting by the fireplace, sipping coffee, feeling comfortable and happy and asking, why? Why, oh why? This is so nice. Why me? You see, in Christ, you belong. You, my friend, belong in, not out. Maybe you've been going through some deep waters in your life. Do you feel hopeless? Looking at the future or even just overwhelmed with the unknown? Are your whys from the outside a place of feeling like you just don't fit, you don't belong? Do you keep chasing another experience, another event, hoping that you're just gonna find what you're looking for, another relationship, another treasure island? You can know today with all certainty, once and for all, that you belong. Open up your life. Open up your home, your living room, to the presence of God and let him reign by making Jesus your Savior, your Lord right now. Pray this. Pray this with me, with all of the faith in your heart, believing and trusting in God. Dear Lord Jesus, I'm tired of being outside, feeling alone. I want to be on the inside. You are the only way for me into God's family. Forgive me of all my sin. You died on the cross for me. God raised you from the grave. Through you, Jesus, I'm now a child of God. Why? Why such great favor? Because of your amazing grace. I'm born again. I belong in the family of God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen. Thank you for sharing this very important time with us. We pray and believe that God's Word is guiding your life and your future from this moment on. Thank you for your generous support. Together, we're getting God's good news to others. Sign up today for the free Today's Life Talk, an encouraging gift from Pastor Stephen. He sends directly to your email. At Living Room Church, you are loved, and we pray blessings on you. Remember, Jesus is Lord, and in Him, we can live life strong.